It's been a little more than three months since Bill Hicks was appointed as district attorney. He will face finish out the two years remaining on Ivano Rosales' term, who resigned after a turbulent two years on the job. Much of that played out on a very public display during her final six months in office. From a gag order on the August 3rd trial, allegations of witness intimidation of a Walmart shooting victim's family, and hundreds of backlog cases being dismissed. But often lost in all of that behind the scenes were the victims of crime. Extra perspective now on why the change in administration is reinvigorating hope in a justice system some feared would fail them. My case started in 2019. That's when I lost my daughter. A mother's pain, even without seeing her face, can be heard in her voice. She was murdered. And it's like a roller coaster. It's an unimaginable journey to justice now more than three years running. That El Paso mother, who we're not identifying because her daughter's case is still pending, has been living with the reality of her daughter's murder since 2019. The case initially in the hands of District Attorney Jaime Esparza's office. But then in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic paralyzes our way of life, including the justice system. In November of that year, El Paso elects a new district attorney, Ivan Rosales, but that four-year term ends not even halfway through amid controversy. Was there ever a point over the last several years that you worried about getting the justice that you felt was right? Yes. When was that point and why? Just from the different changes going on, um, the different district attorneys, it, it's there was a time when it didn't feel like this case was important. Like, it kind of stalled. How did that make you feel? Uh, a lot of different things. Um, frustrated, angry, um, sad. Alejandra Abud was on the front lines of those feelings. Now the program director of the Victim Assistance Program in the DA's office, she was initially hired by Rosales to be the assistant director. But the head of the department at the time announced on Abood's first day, she was resigning. It, it was a very difficult time for, for my department because we were the, the face of the victims and they were seeking answers from us. And at the time it, it was difficult because um, I don't think there was a, a game plan in place. I reached out to former District Attorney Ivan Rosales about those claims. Hi, Ms. Rosales, this is Eric Elkin with ABC7. While she did not return my call, she did text me and provided me with this three-page letter. She says in part, quote, There are two supervisors as part of the advocate section, and I would meet with them regularly, as well as walk around each department and talk to every employee and ask how they are doing, any suggestions for changes, improvements, what is working, what isn't, etc. Every Friday, there was a support staff meeting among supervisors to share information from the administration, have open dialogue to discuss ideas, etc. My first assistant was also very involved in speaking with our employees, and we both had an open door policy if they wanted to speak to us privately. If we were available and have a discussion on a walk in basis, then we would. If not, they could schedule a time with our respective secretaries. She also said she was denied twice by Commissioner's Court when asking for more staff, but ultimately, Rosales' time in office ended with a resignation in late 2022. I Bill D. Hicks. On December 21st, shortly after Rosales resigned, Bill Hicks is sworn in. Among his top priorities, putting an emphasis on the victim assistance program. The prosecutors must talk to the victims of our, of our cases and inform them what the outcome of the case is going to be and why it is going to be that. Hicks says he's personally met with the families of numerous homicide cases. What has impacted you the most coming out of those meetings? Meeting with those families is so hard. Um, it's very emotionally draining because um, all of them are experiencing so much trauma in their lives. Uh, certainly none of them ever wanted to be in those situations. And all of them are, uh, they all feel very lost, very betrayed by the system. And so it's very uh, difficult to meet with them and experience the, the pain that they are experiencing. But they deserve to have the respect of our office 
and to know that we care about them and that we're fighting for them. Life is like at a standstill when it comes to this crime. Um, he's in jail, but yet he's living his life and he gets to see his family. Um, my daughter doesn't get that. But for the first time in a long time, she says she can see the light at the end of the tunnel. There was a lot of changes going on here. There was a lot of different people off and on the case. And now it seems a little more um, stable and uh, like we're getting somewhere. Rather than this one prosecutor kind of being a lone wolf and having to do everything on their own, they were going to have additional help, additional support. They appreciated that. Uh, to know that the that they were getting the support of the entire district attorney's office, uh, and and that we cared, we cared. How do you want people to remember your daughter? Happy and um, the way she was when she was here with us all and even though her life was taken too soon, I want them to see that she was victorious. A victory she hopes to achieve not alone, but hand in hand with the support of the victim advocates who have been there for her for now more than three years. The DA's office tells me they hope to have that case go to trial by the end of the summer. Now, I referenced that three-page letter former DA Ivan Rosales sent me in my report. If you head to KVI.com and click on this story right here and scroll down, you'll see that full uh, letter right here within this story on KVI.com, and you can read it in full if you'd like to do so.